Taking three. I'm going for the St. Louis now. Oh, no. <laughs> Son of a bitch. <laughs> you get your two? <laughs> yeah. Welcome back to the channel everyone, Thakgore here of course. Today we are going to take a look at a replay in the Macau. Very surprising replay for me in the Macau. Before we get into that though, just a quick announcement. Unfortunately the mini winter warm-up tournament that was scheduled for today, February 13th, has been cancelled. It is unfortunate, I know. Um, I'm going to include a link to the forum post in the video description below if you want to go over and check it out. Just because it was cancelled today though, keep in mind it doesn't mean that there won't be more coming up in the future. Uh, the main reason why today's tournament was cancelled, um, I was talking to Trucker earlier and unfortunately last night a number of uh, teams dropped out of the tournament which left only about 12 teams remaining and it just wasn't uh, feasible to go forward with the tournament with those 12. Even though as well, um, Majesh as well had dropped out, we still could have proceeded forward with Trucker and myself. Um, it just, we just didn't have the teams unfortunately in the end. But anyway, anyway, there will be more opportunities coming up in the future so you know just uh, tune into the channel to find out. Obviously once Trucker gets back on his feet as well, you know, take a look at his Twitch channel. So, the replay we are looking at today on Northern Lights in the Mikhail, and like I said, very surprising. So, why is surprising? Now, I, I do, I do like my uh, my Mikhail here, the Tier Eight Russian cruiser. It's a premium cruiser, obviously. I do enjoy it, but to be totally honest with you. For the amount of money I spent on it, I think I would have had a better time in the Otago. That is my feelings towards this ship. It's kind of like I, I bought it out of spite. I'm not going to go into why, uh, explain why the why I did. But anyway, I bought it out of spite. And um, not necessarily regretting it. It's just I probably could have spent my money better, right, with an Otago. But anyway, uh, that being said, the Macau is all right. I mean... The main the main issue I have with her is just her guns. I I'm not, I don't enjoy the, um, the the consistent lack of damage I do I, I find in this ship. With my other ships, I, you know, I average about mm, I think my average on my profile is maybe forty eight thousand damage done in a battle, uh, which isn't too bad. But in some of my higher tiers, usually it's a lot higher than that. Usually it's over a hundred thousand. Um, but in this thing. I struggled to get at least 50,000 damage done because the guns, when they do hit, they don't do a whole lot of damage, um, and it's a whole lot of fire damage that you're actually doing with this uh, with this ship itself. But this battle turns out totally different than that. I do actually end up doing a whole bunch of damage. So <laughs> you can see I'm engaging an enemy destroyer at A, right? This is the plan that I have right now because you'll notice that I do have a lot of ally ships in and behind me. Specifically, I, I'm pretty sure there are three battleships behind me at this point. So this is really an ideal situation for me to be in because uh, you can see I have the heavy guns of my battleships behind me supporting me. In front of me, I have this Fabuki who's moving in position now, and then I'm in between that, right? This is ideal for a cruiser. So what we want to do here is we want to take A. We're going to put pressure on A to take it, right? Um, you can see the enemies do have a number of ships in the background, and in the overall situation on the minimap, the enemies are capping basically all the points right now, right? Uh, they're at D, they're at C, they're at B, and they're at A. So we are essentially, or at least the group that I'm with and what I'm hoping is going to happen is that we're going to take A and then sort of leapfrog to the next position at B and then take C and then maybe take D. D isn't as important. But we definitely want to take A and B and then hopefully try and push for C. So that's the plan. In order to do this, we need to take out the Benson. And, and thankfully, you know, team is all over it. Benson is gone. Fantastic. So my Fabuki is now capping A. Excellent. I'm going to move into the cap and I'm going to help him cap this a little quicker um, hopefully as well take some pressure off of him in case he becomes spotted because in the Macau you have a really high detection range so you are going to be spotted very uh, uh, from a sorry from a very long range out I think it's about 15 kilometers which is pretty terrible uh, for a cruiser but you do have your smoke right so and I, I keep my smoke when I have when I'm taking out the Macau here I only use it for emergency situations I use it totally different on this Macau than I would in a destroyer right <laughs> the destroyer I, I kinda use the smoke at times to set up ambushes well I am not going to do this in this cruiser it just can't happen 
So I am taking shots off at a Cleveland in the background. This is the same Cleveland, I believe, that I was engaging right at the beginning of the game. There's a Turpitz out there as well, and there's also a New Mexico. So I'm obviously most concerned with the Turpitz in New Mexico, and that's what I'm trying to angle against. I don't want to give them too much of a broadside, even though right now I am actually giving them a pretty nice broadside. Um, I'm lucky in that they're not focusing on me. But I'm trying to keep them in mind anyway, right? Because you, you can't take any sort of major high caliber hits in this cruiser. It You will get settled and you will go down. Now, an enemy destroyer pops up. It's uh, Mitsuki, I believe. So immediately start engaging the enemy destroyer, right? We got to take this guy down. Um, fairly big threat. He's popping in and out of cover right now, or in and out of smoke, I should say. But he is pop, or he is, you know, coming into sight every now and then, thanks to my ally destroyer, the Fubuki up there, right? And again, you can take a look at my positioning here. I'm staying behind the Fubuki, right? And the and hopefully, when you're doing this, the battleships who are then behind you will push up um, and keep this sort of formation going. Because it's not, you know, in this game, it's not necessarily about... Um, sailing in straight lines and these big fancy formations like they would have done in the age of sail ships basically right you don't need to do this get your ships all up in a line and turn all synchronous together and stuff no if you can manage to get yourself into a position where i am at now uh where you have where assuming you're in a cruiser uh, you would have your destroyer out front the cruiser you would be in the middle and your battleships will be in back um, and these lines will interchange especially like in a situation that we're moving into right now where we've capped the point we've capped a right and we're pushing beyond a so you can see now is a great time as well for my battleships to really push forward their advance and for a cruiser to come in and support the battleships right so i'm focusing on the cleveland right now there is something to be said about focusing fire I'm not necessarily focused with the battleships. I'm trying to take out the cruiser so that the cruisers won't set my battleships on fire. I'm hoping that my battleships are going to be able to engage the Turpets and enemy New Mexico, take those guys down, and in turn, I'm going to take down uh, the cruisers, right? This Cleveland, um, try and get them gone so that my friendly battleships don't catch on fire. That is my thought anyway, but... Um, doesn't mean that this is necessarily the best course of action, right? There is the option, of course, of shooting at the enemy battleships if they're in range, and especially, you know, focusing fire like we discussed. Um, it's just, I don't, I, yeah, I'm not sure why I went for the Cleveland. I just wanted that Cleveland gone. I knew I could do really good damage to the Clevelands in this Mikhail, so that's really what I was going for. Um, the uh, Cleveland is now gone. One of my allies got the kill, so that is fantastic. We do have an enemy Miyoko that we're going to start lining up on. We did see an enemy cruiser out there as well. Another Cleveland as well, so we see that guy. Um, but I'm going to focus on the Miyoko here. Now, the Miyoko is a whole different beast uh, to fight against than the Cleveland that I was fighting against, right? The Miyoko has the 8-inch guns, so you need to keep this in mind, so you do really need to angle when you are fighting against a Miyoko, especially when you're in a cruiser. It doesn't really matter what type of cruiser. Uh, those 8-inch guns on, um, or well, the 203s on the Miyoko really hit hard. So you can see that I'm doing a pretty good job of angling, but I'm still trying to um, keep my situational awareness because I want to go up this channel, and in case you didn't notice, see the enemy New Mexico? Yeah, he's pushing up into to be. So yeah, here we go. I am going to start lining up some torpedoes on this enemy New Mexico. See if he actually goes in a straight line, right? <laughs> Chances are he will. <laughs> So torpedoes are away. Uh, torpedoes on the Macau will go 8 kilometers. They're decent torpedoes. Uh, my biggest gripe with them is that they are slow. Uh, they're fairly slow torpedoes, right? So generally speaking, I'm not launching my torpedoes at their max range. Uh, it's usually in situations much like this with the New Mexico where I'm ambushing people with the torpedoes, right? Or firing them at point blank <laughs> because obvious reasons anyway torpedoes on the way from the new mexico i'm going to get uh, another salvo into the new mexico well my rear turrets made it over the mountain into the new mexico here notice that the new mexico was on fire right so we know that his repair is on cooldown so he's not going to be able to uh, put out the flooding damage right away if my torpedoes hit him we can see the torpedoes are almost about to hit him through the mountain well we could there briefly anyway there we go we start hitting the new mexico we managed to get him with two of the five torpedoes we can see he's on very low health and he continues to flood right so fantastic there he goes killed the new mexico perfect now we are really close to b so we're going to start pushing into b right 
keeping with the overall strategy, things you know seem to be going well, and, and my team is positioned to support us in this endeavor. So we're going to push and cap B. Now, while we're doing this, you'll notice that the enemies did take C, and they've pushed beyond C, right? They have two battleships. So there's North Carolina over there, there's the Tirpitz over there, and there is also another Macau. So we need to keep these guys in mind. Because I'm going down this channel, I really don't have any other option but to present a broadside. I'm firing madly. I have my smoke popped because, you know, again, this is a defensive maneuver with the smoke here. Trying to limit what they see or, uh, of me. And to my luck, I guess, the enemy battleships aren't focused on me. They're not actually firing at me, which is fantastic. I can continue to put shots into the Tirpitz, and I'm doing pretty good damage to this Tirpitz as well. Now that the Tirpitz is kind of angling away from me, I'm not going to be able to get as great shot, uh, great of shots into him. I start immediately switching over to the North Carolina. So North Carolina, you know, is giving me a nice broadside right now. I think he was actually firing at me, or maybe that was the Macau, but doesn't matter. Nothing actually hit me, or didn't do any significant damage, so it doesn't matter. Keep putting shots into the North Carolina, finish off with five more hits. That's not too bad at all, and get the assist on the capture of B. Fantastic. So, now that we have B, we are in a great position now to start pushing into C. The reason why I say we're in a great position to push into C is that we do have my two ally ships down there in the south right now. That's not the best position for those guys to be in. However, the position that they are in does allow them to be able to engage those uh, enemy battleships, right? The Tirpitz, North Carolina, and the Macau, who are putting pressure on B once they exited C. So, okay, all right. Now, over at uh, sorry, over at C, where I'm on my way over to, there's not a whole lot of enemy ships over here. I do have some support, but I don't have any direct support, right? At this point in time, my team is kind of uh, sort of happy with what we've got, but they are still in a position to provide me some support at C if needed. I'm not going to sit around, though, and just remain at cap parity, because if you look at the points, we are leading, but it's not a big lead. I want C. I want that third point, right? That's what I'm going to push towards. Now, I get lucky in that at this point in time in the battle, it's fairly, you know, late into the battle, mid-battle here, um, and the enemy ships that I'm going to be coming against aren't full health, right? You do see the Turpis, who is fairly full health, but he's behind an island, so once I come beyond this uh, headland, I can start engaging the Cleveland. We can see the Cleveland there, uh, you know, quarter health, basically a little less but the Tirpitz won't be able to fire into me, so I decide to continue pushing forward. Risky maneuver here. It is always risky for a lone cruiser to cap a point on its own. Um, it can do it if there's not a whole lot of enemy opposition. It cannot do it if there is a lot of enemy opposition. The cruiser will just get overwhelmed and die, right? That's normally what will happen. But in my situation, no. I only have a Cleveland contest with, um, and the Tirpitz, which you know would be a fairly big threat because I'm within his range, not a threat at all. We can see that he is behind the mountain. The mountain is starting to show up as well, so don't need to worry about the Tirpitz. Immediately, I start engaging the Cleveland, right? I want to get this guy gone. Should be fairly easy as well. So the first salvo goes in, get myself a Confederate, which is not too shabby at all. And I did a bunch of damage to the Cleveland, which is fantastic. So we put out the fire. I send in another salvo didn't do as much damage as the first one did, so okay, we'll need to send out one more to finish him off. Salvo is out. I put out the fire that the Cleveland set on me. Salvo goes in. Cleveland is gone. That's my second kill. Fantastic. So that's not too bad at all. You can see what I was talking about of the uh, Turpets being behind the island. He's right over there behind the island, so can't engage me at all. This is great. I am in C, capping C now. And this was, turned out to be a great move because the enemies are now capping B, right? We can see them in there. Uh, starting to cap B. So this was a good play on my behalf to go over here at C. Now I'm not going to go beyond C. I'm not going to circle in behind the enemies because I'm really afraid of the Tirpitz because he's coming out from cover now so he'd be able to put shots into me and the North Carolina because the North Carolina is still around and the North Carolina is a lot closer than the Tirpitz is so you know if the North Carolina decides to put a full broadside into me I probably am going to die, so <laughs> not willing to stick around. So we're going to go back over to B and defend it, right? I'm happy with the three points that we have. Uh, we should be able to take it. There's only two enemy ships remaining at this point as well, so victory is really close. It's in our hands. Uh, we just need to make sure we don't do anything too stupid at this point, basically. So pushing over into B. The North Carolina 
I, I mean, yeah, it's kind of dumb what what he's doing. You know, sir, what the player is doing, I should say, staying in there at B and, and engaging everyone at close range, like he is. Uh, we can see him here, right? And all my allies are engaging him as well. But to be fair, two enemy ships remaining. You don't necessarily want to go down like the Turpets, because <laughs> the Turpets is kind of, you know, at a position right now, and you know that uh, we are all going to gang up on that Turpets and take him out. Whereas at least with the North Carolina, he's going down fighting, right? All guns blazing, just going to take whatever ships he can out before he dies. So, yeah, some respect there for this player anyway. M slowly moving into B, coming around the island now, right? Um, well sort of anyway <laughs> coming around the island moving into B taking a look at the North Carolina so fairly close obvious thing to do here is to try and line up some torpedoes right and that's what I'm going to do I'm gonna hold off on them for right now though I want to get a nice clean shot at the North Carolina to take him out also I need to consider the fact that my ally right I have an ally North Carolina right there as well so taking that all into consideration decide to fire off the torpedoes because it does does look like the North Carolina is going to turn into them my hope is that you know most of the torpedoes or all the torpedoes will hit the North Carolina take him out and have all five of them hit him so that none of them continue forward into my friendly North Carolina. That is what I was hoping here. Anyway, <laughs> so managed to hit the North Carolina with one torpedo, put some shots into him as well. He's gone. Fantastic. Third kill. But my torpedoes are continuing forward. I was really concerned at this point for my friendly North Carolina. Luckily, my friendly North Carolina was going fast enough to just be able to get out of the way, right? And those torpedoes, like I said earlier on the Macau, uh, travel fairly slow, so he was able to get out of it without any issue, which wasn't too bad at all. Now we just have the one enemy ship remaining. It's an enemy Turpets, right? We can see him over here off in the distance, so it's just a matter of getting this guy gone, and we can get victory. I was about to get a surprise here while engaging the enemy Turpets, like I had mentioned at the beginning. Now, getting the Confederate medal, not necessarily that big of a surprise in a uh, Macau, because, you know, you have rapid-firing cannons, you can easily do um, a bit of damage to a number of enemy targets, right? It's not that hard to do. To get, say, a high caliber in the Macau, especially, you know, being at Tier 8, is a totally different, or a totally different uh, scenario, right? It, it, for me, anyway, I find, in this ship, difficult enough to do. So the Turpitz is closing its distance. He is engaging my friendly North Carolina. This creates an excellent opportunity for me to just pump shells into this Turpitz, do a bunch of damage, and get him gone as quick as possible, right, while he is engaging my friendly North Carolina. So shots are going into him. I've managed to set him on fire. We're doing some decent damage here as well, because you'll notice my aiming isn't too shabby at this point in time. <laughs> I'm managing to keep my shells more or less above his... Um, uh, the side of his ship right above his armor belt and hitting the superstructure hitting the things on top of his superstructure so he's on fire I think two times right now in two separate spots there we go get the high caliber so I was I was like what the hell is going on and actually at this point in time obviously we win but Poodahead jumps into the team speak channel it's like oh <laughs> can't believe I got a high caliber in a Macau I just didn't think it was possible overall results right 722,000 credits 10,000 experience uh, manage the four kills the three assist base captures is what and the total you know solo base captures are really attributed to this 3400 base experience Fantastic. <laughs> uh, in terms of damage done, what we're looking at here is about 145,000 damage done in the Macau, which I was really surprised with. You know, lots of credits I walk away with, lots of experience I walk away with as well. Overall, fantastic game. Um, you know, the team really enabled this game as well. Um, it's, it's random, I know, with random people, and you know, how much do random people actually work together like that and it's very true and you can see you can see in the video where you know parts where the team sort of let me down in certain areas but other times they were there for me right they're not going to be there 100 percent of the time because it's random people it's just not going to happen but we've talked about before as long as you can recognize how they're deployed where they are the situation that is unfolding and how you can take advantage of that we will be much better off anyway anyway that is today's video 
thank you as always for sticking around watching it through again you know the link to the tournament page is in my video description below if you wanted to go over and just uh, take a look read it for yourself um, hit the old like button if you did like today's video hit subscribe if you are not a subscriber and as always folks I do hope you enjoy the rest of your day